All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another smartphone doctor repair. Today, we are going to be working on a iPad Air 5. Um, it's got a cracked screen. It's kind of going crazy. Um, but we are going to get this replaced for the customer. And then we're going to transfer over the iPad screen data so it'll work with an Apple Pencil. So we're going to go ahead and just get this screen up. I've had it on my heat mat now for around 10 minutes at about 70 degrees Celsius. So we were going to get the screen up. We really don't have any use for it because the panel is already broken on it. But we do need to at least uh, keep it so that we can read and write the screen data off of it to the new screen so that they may use their Apple Pencil with it. So we are just going to get this screen up. Luckily it's not broken too bad to where the screen kind of just would explode on us. And these newer iPad screens, they work really well. They work really well. Okay. Alright, so we're just getting this up with our, our Sesamo tool. We finally got over here to where the cracks are starting to sprout out from. Just going to stay underneath the glass. And then this iPad folds the other way. So we're going to just get this up. Nothing too crazy here. Okay. So we are in, we are in. Oh my goodness, it's going crazy. Alright. So this guy folds open to the right. Just like that. Perfect. Perfect. Alright. So we are in the iPad now. So first thing we're going to do is uh, go ahead and take up our screen connectors. We got this guy opened up. Or the screen I.O. plates rather, not the connectors. We're gonna disconnect the battery first before we take up the connectors. Just lay everything out next nicely neat side of us right there. Uh, unscrew the battery screw. And then we're gonna safely separate the board from the battery connector. Let me make sure you guys can see everything I see. Okay, perfect. Use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to help the board lift up. I'm gonna go in with a little plastic tool here. Just see if we can shimmy that under the board. There we go. And now we have safely separated the mother motherboard from the battery. Uh, so we can go ahead and safely disconnect the screen without causing any backlight damage. And then we're just gonna pull up on the screen. The screen doesn't have any face ID on it, um, so the screen is literally all just one piece. And the uh, touch ID sensor is built into the frame, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. On the Pro Series iPads you do, but not for the Air Series. All right, next up we're gonna clean and prep the frame. So let's go ahead and just use our razor blade tool here and just get up all the remaining adhesive and glass on the side of the frame here and toss that in the trash. These uh, frames are very, very narrow, so you definitely want to clean and then prep the frame with some Primer 94 here, just to ensure a good bond and that the screen does not lift for the customer. Also on these guys, you wanna make sure you're replacing it with a premium quality screen uh, the aftermarket screens on, on really any iPad assembly all kind of just suck. They're too thick, they don't sit well, their bezels are off, the color's off. And uh, this model here, it's not too much more expensive to just get the refurbished display. That way you keep an original Apple panel. Come on. There we go. All right, so our frame is nice and clean. Now let's add some primer to it. Open this guy up. Grab a little Q-tip. Dip it in there. 
You wanna be careful when applying this. You don't wanna get it on the front camera because then you will need to replace their camera because it'll get blurry. But we are quite busy today, so I'm on a little bit of a time rush here, but fret not. I have done thousands of these guys. All right, so we got some primer all the way around the frame. We're just gonna let that guy dry. Okay, so what we are going to do here, oh goodness, I'm gonna sit on the replacement screen. Lol. Okay, <clears throat> let's go ahead and turn on our programmer. So we are on the iPad screen uh, for this guy here. And uh, the JC video they have on YouTube only really goes over like an iPad Pro, but they all work the same way. So when you get the uh, JC programmer, I use a V1S Pro, it's gonna come with all these little adapter tools here. Um, this one is for the Air 4 and 5. So uh, arrow up to snap the motherboard screen display. So I'm gonna plug this guy in here to the motherboard. Okay. And then I'm gonna plug in the display or rather I should probably plug this guy in first to the screen and then plug this guy into the motherboard and plug in both of our digitizers back in place basically if you don't transfer these on the newer iPad screens um, the customers Apple pencil will still work, it just won't form any straight or diagonal lines. The line will be squiggly for, for no reason. And um, for people that uh, use their iPad to draw or create or take notes down for school, it just doesn't look that well. And they'll be back wondering why their screen is causing that with the Apple Pencil, trust me. You want to take care of the customer and get it done the right the first time. Okay. So we have everything plugged in here now. A little wonky at first. Uh, so we are going to now remove our little pick and we're gonna turn the iPad on. Uh, this is very similar to like copying over True Tone data. I believe it's called MTSN. So we have our screen connected, the broken screen. We have the little adapter connected to it. And we have the little flex cable we're gonna to connect to our V1S Pro. So we're gonna turn the iPad back on. Um, I believe your screen does not have to be working. And now we can see this guy is lighting up. So that is good. All right, we're just gonna kind of prop it up right there. Then we're gonna connect our programmer here. And we're going to connect it into the primary one. Okay. So we will wait for the iPad to boot up. Really don't have a way to tell, but I can press the lock button and see once it fully kicks on. Okay. All right, so we're gonna hit uh, iPad read, and then this is a iPad Air 5. Now it has read our LCD data there. And then what we're going to do is hit save data. We're gonna save it locally, and we're just gonna save it as the name of the iPad. So we hit return, we'll hit save. Save data is complete. Now, since I can't really see the screen on the iPad, I'm just gonna disconnect the battery here just so I can safely know that the iPad is turned off. Grab my little guitar pick, slide it back under the board to disconnect the battery. All right, now we're done with this screen. We have no use for it. We've read the data off of it and saved it to our device. So in the broken screen bin you go. Now, new screen. This is from Phone LCD Parts, great company. Definitely encourage you guys to start shopping there. They take care of me and my business. I'm sure they'll do the same to you. 
All right. Here's our new screen assembly. And just take this off here. Okie dokie. So, we are going to plug this guy back in. Got a little crimp on the cable there. Plug in you. I don't know if the digis have to be plugged in, but I just go ahead and plug it all in just to be on the safe side. I don't know if it reads touch data or the screen data. It's so weird doing it from like this angle. Okay. Now we will get this guy plugged in as well. And then this guy is going to plug into our little adapter here. All right. Now, we are going to connect our battery screw back into place, and then let's boot the iPad back on using the power button. And we should get a display with this one because it's a new screen. There we go, perfect. So I'm just gonna use this to prop the iPad screen up with, and as you can see, we are getting a little indicator light um, that the screen is on So we'll just wait for this guy to kick back on Oh no, I hope I didn't get a bad screen that would be unfortunate It is just boot looping over at the Apple logo. Let's see here. Oh There we go didn't have that guy snapped in all the way. That may be why. Oh, well. Let's see here. If we can write the data. Perfect. But if you didn't have this guy plugged back in, what you can do is go to local file. You can then click on this guy here and hit open. And then you can also hit uh, write as well. But the screen is not on, so we'll hit write right there. And write successful. Okay, so now we've written over the screen data from the original screen to the new screen. So we'll close out of that. Let's go ahead and disconnect our battery screw. Perfect, we've got that disconnected. And then let's just disconnect this guy. Disconnect this guy. We're done with our programmer for now. And now, we can just go about our day and plug in the iPad screen. Make sure those two connectors are tight and down. Make sure everything's snapped into place as it should be. We'll put our battery screw in here. Then our other two plates. And this guy's a little weird. He has to like slide through. There we go. Got it on the first try. We'll hold it down with our finger. And then screw this screw back into place. Perfect. All right, so we have our new screen here. We've written the data over. Don't need the V1S Pro anymore. All right, now we will boot up the screen here. And we are getting good amp draw, 1.6 amps at 5 volts. It's plenty good for the iPad. Oh, what is going on here? Hmm. 
Alrighty, and we are back into our iPad. We have a fully working display. Obviously for privacy reasons, I'm not gonna unlock the iPad and show you guys everything on the client's iPad, but that is pretty much it. Um, as far as the iPad Air 4s and 5s go, um, screen replacement wise, super easy. And then a reputable repair shop such as ourselves here at the Smart Foam Doctor. Uh, we will write over your data uh, from the old screen to the new screen uh, so you can use your Apple Pencil with it, no problem. Uh, we appreciate you very much. If you ever need a repair done like this, come by and see us. We're in Springfield, Missouri, 4131 South National Avenue. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.